Okay, inflammatory bowel disease. Simply by the name, you should be able to figure out what's going on here. The bowel is becoming inflamed and it's going to cause a lot of complications for our patients. So there's two different kind of subclasses of inflammatory bowel disease. The first is going to be ulcerative colitis and the second is going to be Crohn's disease. Now surely you've heard of these and these are kind of like subclasses of inflammatory bowel disease. So up here on the top we have IBD and then there's kind of two types. It's ulcerative colitis versus Crohn's disease. Okay, so let's talk about the difference between the two of these and the difference is really kind of what part of the bowel they're infecting, they're affecting. So with ulcerative colitis, we're talking about chronic inflammation of mucosa and submucosa of colon and rectum. Okay, whereas with Crohn's disease, we're talking about inflammatory disease of GI mucosa anywhere from mouth to anus, most often affecting the terminal ileum. Okay, so the difference mainly with these two is going to be here's our mouth and then we go small intestine blah 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 and then we have our large intestine okay so with ulcerative colitis we're talking mostly colon and rectum okay with Crohn's disease we're talking anywhere along this entire path all the way up from mouth to anus now the problem with ulcerative colitis is obviously this is going to lead to it results in poor absorption of nutrients due to this inflammation and the, it can actually progress upward from rectum all the way up to the cecum okay the perforation can develop as colon becomes edematist and this leads to lesions and ulcers and it goes through exacerbations and remission episodes so the patient will have a, a, a very bad exacerbation of the disease they'll have um, worsening symptoms and then it can it can go away okay now with Crohn's disease this actually leads to thickening and scarring and ulcerations and abscesses along the GI tract. Again, this also has remissions and exacerbations, okay? So that's a general overview of the two different kinds, ulcerative colitis versus Crohn's disease. Now let's dive in a little bit more and get a bigger picture of kind of what's going on with each one. With ulcerative colitis, so this, remember we talked about ulcerative colitis is going to be rectum and cecum. And, and what it is, is it's this inflammation. You can see this redness and this inflammation along the bowel. What can happen due to this is it can actually lead to 10 to 20 liquid stools per day that contain blood and or mucus, okay? 10 to 20 very liquidy stools per day. So if your patient comes in with that, automatically we know something's up, right? So because of these multiple, multiple liquidy stools, our big concern with these patients is gonna be malnutrition, dehydration, and electrolyte imbalances. If they're just tossing everything out, that means they're not absorbing anything, okay? As, as the bowel becomes inflamed, like this, they're going to be throwing everything out in their stool and they're not going to be able to um, absorb the nutrients and the, and the electrolytes and fluids and things that they need. So the patient may experience anorexia, they just don't feel like eating, they don't want to eat because it's just so painful, um, all these stools, okay? So that's going to be kind of what's going on with ulcerative colitis. Now how are we going to manage this? So during the acute phases, during these exacerbations, we want to maintain the patient in PO. And we're going to administer IV fluids and electrolytes. So we'll take uh, a lot of labs on these patients and kind of figure out where their electrolytes are. And we're going to administer uh, electrolyte replacement as needed, as well as put the patient on, on, uh, on fluids, okay? We want to reduce the intestinal activity. So again, maintaining in PO, um, bowel rest to help uh, prevent these, this malabsorption and these multiple, multiple stools. We're gonna assess the stools for blood. We wanna make sure the patient isn't losing blood in their stool. And we wanna monitor for bowel perforation and hemorrhage. So one way we can do this is, is going to be the bleeding in the stool, okay? Some of the medications we can give with this are gonna be corticosteroids. That's gonna decrease inflammation and immune response. Again, immunomodulators as well to help decrease immune response. Salicylates and antidiarrheals, okay? try to slow the movement of this diarrhea out of uh, the patient. Some of the diets that we want to do with these patients, again, some of the things that we're concerned about here with our patients are, are them getting the nutrients that they need. Okay, so you want to give them a high calorie, high protein diet. Help to get them as much nutrients as we can, provide vitamins and iron, and a low residue diet. Okay, we want to prevent this diarrhea, and we want to increase nutrients to help. 